Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balagum. Coming up on the program, Lagos State Government holds 9th Lagos Corporate Assembly. Lagos State Government to hold Pan-African Carnival Afropolis to boost tourism. And Lagos State Government unveils 24-hour customer service center to enhance traffic management. Amid the current economic downturn facing the country, the Lagos State Government has reiterated Babajide Sonwalu's administration's commitment to providing resources, infrastructure and, of course, policies for businesses in the state to thrive. The State Deputy Governor, Kadri Hamzat, gave this assurance at the 9th Corporate Assembly, BOS meets with business community with the theme, Unpacking Barriers to Ease of Doing Business, Accelerating Business Growth. It's the 9th Lagos Corporate Assembly, the fourth in its series, where the BOS meets with key players in the business community. I urge you all to remain engaged with us, continue to provide constructive feedback, work with us in this noble endeavor, and together we shall continue to make Lagos State a model city of excellence, a model mega city of excellence, and the most attractive destination for businesses and innovation in Africa. Captains of industry, Members of the Diplomatic Corps and other stakeholders in the business sector converge on Eco Hotel and Suites, Victoria Island, to discuss pertinent issues affecting small and medium enterprises, as well as policies put in place to curb substandard and unregistered products. SON has invested in some reforms for product standardization, monitoring manufacturing facilities, testing product samples, and reviewing compliance documentation. We proudly uphold our dedication to fostering good manufacturing practices and safeguarding consumers' right to access quality products that conform to standards requirements. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the organization introduced Standards Organization of Nigeria Conformity Assessment Program, SUNCAP, in 2005 to address the challenges of the incessant influx of substandard and unsafe products into the country. The compliance of such products in which the applicable Nigeria Industrial Standard NIS specification and other approved international standards prior to obtaining the pre-arrival assessment report par. This the basis for ensuring that all goods imported into Nigeria conform to the Nigeria Industrial Standard or approved international standards. This service can be accessed through our independent accredited firm, IAFs, with, which carry out conformity assessment of product on behalf of the Standards Organization of Nigeria. As of 2003, we may be bold to say that we have registered about 6,000 MSMEs in Lagos State alone. And this is about 25% of registered MSMEs in the country. So we have been able to do this by reducing our timelines. We have developed a user-friendly website with robust information that you don't even need to. Uh, we have reduced interface with our officers in our registration process. We have also created a help desk for MSME in all the states and the zone. That of Lagos State is in our OSHO, the office. We have reduced our tariff significantly to accommodate small and medium scale enterprises. And we have also decentralized our registration to the zones so that somebody in Kano, somebody in uh, Maiduguri does not need to come to Lagos to register their product. You can easily do it at the zonal level. The federal government says it's very much aware of the unstable exchange rate and how it's taken a toll on businesses but will ensure policies are put in place to make things easy for the organized private sector. Accelerating diversification, which is where His Excellency Mr. President has rested his eight-point agenda for this administration. This particular mandate fits in the entire eight-point agenda. We support six directly and two indirectly as an enabler for the work that they do. Now, the presidential priorities, number seven of which is accelerating diversification, also closely related to number one, which speaks to the macro 
environment that we all operate in. And just to say some of the things that we all know, interconnectivity, accelerating power, many of you need power, access to finance, um, the policies that these six ministries are focusing on. So I'm, I'm putting this in the context of what the federal government is currently implementing. And all this information is publicly available on the website of the Central Delivery Coordinating Unit, CDCU. And the tracking of it is open to the public as well. The key outcomes expected are to increase contribution to GDP, that's for this particular priority, to deploy the growth strategies that private sector have said they need, and to increase export activities, because we all know that we're not solving this FX challenge anytime soon without increasing the supply. Lagos being the commercial nerve center of the country attracts investors. What better time than now to assure business owners that the state is safe for investment? Through our team's plus plus development agenda, we are unwavering in our commitment to fostering an environment where businesses can flourish. This agenda embodies our vision for a greater Lagos, especially highlighted by the fourth pillar, which is the M, meaning making Lagos a 21st century economy. Through the implementation of this agenda, we have initiated numerous policy reforms to facilitate business operations in Lagos. We are simplifying regulatory processes, improving infrastructure, and leveraging technology to streamline interaction between businesses and government agencies. Our goal, therefore, is to minimize bureaucratic blockages and create a seamless experience for all businesses operating in our state. A case in point, was when the Ministry of Commerce, Cooperative and Trade and Investment, in collaboration with the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, worked to align the interests of a state agency with those of a platinum PEBEC member. I'm sure they know the company involved. This initiative facilitated a mutually benefiting working relationship by bringing both parties to the negotiating table in a spirit of fairness and equity. This collaborative approach is how we aim to continue working, fostering partnership between states, ministries, departments, and agencies, and members of the organized private sectors as allies in progress. As a government, we see this assembly as a crucial platform for public-private dialogue, where we collectively identify challenges, discuss solutions, and chart a course for sustainable economic growth and development. This is because we understand and recognize the power of stakeholder engagement and the importance of providing a listening here to the business communities. Our resolve is to make this assembly a formidable platform for public-private collaboration, ensuring that your voices are heard and your concerns are addressed promptly. So I assure you of our continued support as our administration is unreservedly committed to providing the necessary resources infrastructure and policies that will ensure your businesses not only survive but thrive. Implementing deliberate policies and intentional strategies to facilitate the ease of doing business is highlighted as the backbone to help sustain businesses and attract more investors into Lagos State. Moving on to arts and culture, this time the Lagos State government is set to hold the maiden edition of the Pan-African Carnival called Afropolis for the promotion of black cultural heritage, creativity, and innovation. Now, the State Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Toki Benson Awoyinka, disclosed this during a town hall meeting in Lagos. She says the ministry is collaborating with Kudus Onikeku, a multimodal international artist, to host Afropolis scheduled for October the 26th to November the 3rd. <laughs> John Randall Center for Yoruba Culture and History in Onikon area of Lagos Island is the venue for visitors working with the State Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture for the forthcoming Afropolis Lagos 2024. <laughs> They move around the center to have a glimpse of different cultural heritage displayed. Most of the things that you see here were done by hand. And then the 
lot of them that we are still saying today. I see some of them, um, the BG, you know what they call the BG, the Ubala, that is the twins. This is their statue and all those stuff. The way they usually use hands to mold things and then the traditional water. The facility tells a story of Yoruba history and culture which emerged from the restoration of a public swimming pool built in 1928 by John Randall, a prominent Lagosian in King George V Park. What better location to use for the maiden edition of the Pan-African Carnival Afropolis which will be coming up in October than J. Randall. We are going to mount a proper dance theatre <laughs> on the street of J.K. Randall. And that will have about 500 seater, a proper seat, then a proper stage, and you have your light rig, and that's for the dance productions. Then from like 9 p.m. to like 11 p.m., we have on this side a music stage where we are bringing in amazing artists from Kenya. You have uh, people like Kezia Jones, who is our, one of our biggest exports. You have Blinky Bill, who is from Nairobi. You have Madekuti from Lagos. You have Celia, who is from Guadeloupe. So you have all of these amazing artists that can be taken each evening as well for the music concert, also two hours. And by 11 p.m., everybody goes to sleep. Then the next day, everybody's back here again. So during 10 days, nine days, sorry, from the 26th all the way to the 3rd, we've already made serious plan everything you're seeing here they are confirmed they are not just graphic design <laughs> everything you're seeing here we've been working tirelessly since last year to deliver something that i believe that lagos has never seen before the state commissioner for tourism arts and culture toke benson awoyinka says the carnival will showcase african creatives with diverse tradition as we gather here today it's also important to reflect on the historical significance of Oniko. This area has long been a cultural hub, as Kudus has said, and hosting Af Afropolis here is a fitting tribute to its legacy. The John Randall C Center for Yoruba Culture and History, in particular, stands as the beacon of our rich heritage and offers the perfect backdrop for this celebration. Additionally, we have launched various funding programs to support young creatives and organize international cultural exchange programs. These initiatives have enabled our artists to gain new perspectives, enhance their skills, and bring innovation, innovative ideas back to Lagos. Hosting profile, high profile events such as Lagos Fashion Week, Lagos Theater Festival, and Lagos Photo Festival has also played a crucial role in putting Lagos on the global cultural map. These events attract international attention, foster collaborations, and showcase the immense talent and creativity that our city has to offer. Afropolis, scheduled for the end of October through to early November, will transform Onikon, Onikon's main street, John Randall Road, into a vibrant hub of artistic and technological ex excellence. The festival will feature a curated marketplace, traditional and contemporary performances, exhibitions and more. It will bring together creatives, innovators, and enthusiasts from across the continent and beyond. The goal of Afropolis is to foster collaboration, inspire innovation, and celebrate diverse traditions and creativity of Africa. We aim to create a space where creatives from diverse backgrounds can come together to share ideas, learn from each other, and create something truly unique. One of the partners working with the state to ensure the success of the carnival is excited to be part of it. Our mission basically is uh, job and wealth creation and opportunities for creative expression for women and young people um, within the creative economy. So in summary, what we're doing is we're enabling creative economy growth um, through innovation and technology. Afropolis is scheduled for October 26 to November 3. An artist from different African continents and beyond will be visiting Lagos to display their talent, thereby boosting tourism. And finally on the program is the transportation sector. As part of efforts to enhance the operations of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, the state government has launched a 24-hour customer service center equipped with dedicated toll-free hotlines a walk-in complaint center, a website, a whistleblower app, 
and the new Department of Statistics, Research and Data to help deliver better services to citizens. Take a look. Improving the services of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority has gone a step further with the introduction of the LASMA Customer Support Centers and Application. <laughs> Officials of LASMA now have to embrace the use of technology to get their work done more efficiently. The new development has brought the State Commissioner for Transportation, Olua Shimon Shiemi, the Special Advisor on Transportation, Shola Giwa, to LASMA Headquarters, Oshudi, for the official launch LASMA Customer Support Center and app for citizens. A new development with facilities of a toll-free call center, walk-in complaint center, amongst other components that will help boost communication systems between the public and the State Traffic Management Authority. Everything is set for us and as negotiators we are ready to serve the people of the the Special Advisor on Transportation, Shala Giwa, who oversees the duties of LASMA, explains the benefit of the technology-driven interface and gives a comprehensive breakdown of private and commercial vehicles impounded in the last six months. This department, this new research, gets online real-time data. And we are working with Google to remind our data, the partner with us, so the, our data integrity is highly solid. So people, at, at the end of the day, Institutions, uh, academics can come to LASMA to come and get our data. So once they know that it's highly verifiable, so let's start. So I just want to show you some of the things we've been doing. Let me see this from the beginning, I just talk to you. So these are the number of vehicles that have been founded from January to June. We see commercial vehicles, we see private vehicles, and we see the number of uh, total vehicles in power. In the last in the last six months, we've invited 9,370 vehicles, and if you see Commercial vehicles are more than private. See commercial vehicles, 5,000, and the private is about 3,000. So for those of you that say last month you don't arrest <laughs> commercial vehicles, we do arrest them a lot. But the thing is that they quickly go to the court and pay their fine because they want to go on and move. So when you get to us, uh, uh, yeah, you might not see them. We have also seen a downward uh, trend in the number of vehicles that we took. So we realized that, that any, when last month stop people to apprehend their vehicle, they normally drive and allow, they comply with last month. Last month sitting their vehicle and they drive to our station. So we are seeing compliance. It means that our enlightenment program is working with the people of Lagos State. Please. And then you can see, let me just go back a bit. You will see that the number of vehicles that are imparted are more buses than every other vehicles. Please go. So you can see on the breakdowns, if you see most of the breakdowns that we have realized that it is more of breakdowns, it is more of containerized vehicles that are usually breaking down. And that talks to the conditions of these trailers. And we are working with VIS, we are working with MPA, the commissioner is even right now working with all the stakeholders in that industry to make sure that we bring it, the standard is raised, we raise the bar of the standard of the vehicle. There's also a whistleblower app to residents to report all forms of reckless behavior on the road. So this is the app called Whistle. And this is what it is. It is to empower the government to ensure safety. You can report those accidents, dangerous driving, traffic violation, expired vehicle, papers. You can also help us get traffic congestion there on the road. Because once you see this thing, you take it, it gets uploaded to last part immediately. So this is how you can also help us to report bad road users. So what you need to do is just go to Play Store, download the app, and sign up. When you see any accident, you take a video, you send it to us. Somebody is driving uh, in a dangerous manner, you see. Somebody beats traffic lights, you can always take them. Any traffic congestion you see on the road, just take them, upload them. We will get it immediately in this data center. And someone, all our last month personnel will be paid at that location where the accident is, when, when the issue is happening. So someone will respond to it immediately. It has been designed like that. For the State Commissioner for Transportation, the Customer Support Center aims to address traffic issues promptly and also verify complaints. The benefit is enormous. Um, one of the major ones is the ability to give us feedback 
and accessibility for public, so to say, and a faster reaction to issues that they have, and also an, um, a platform whereby they can make legitimate complaints when they are. So there's accessibility, there's a platform for complaints, and also the response time will be increased and also help us in the, in the way of service from our own people. It's not all complaints that come in that will earn points. They are verifiable. If, for instance, somebody takes a picture of a character going one way, you can see from the picture if the person is driving, truly driving against traffic. So they are verifiable things. It's not like someone just takes a picture and sends it in because he wants to earn the points, which is why money tags are not put on these things. Because the moment you do that, it would abuse and um, lose the objective of what we're, what we're trying to achieve. But by earning points, we'll verify whatever has been sent in, even on our AMPR cameras that we have. When um, those pictures are taken, it can actually show exactly what's going on. Residents are advised to utilize the service center for efficient traffic management across Lagos State. We want to encourage the citizens to buy in into this app because it will be it's patriotic that you see something that is happening on our road. We cannot be everywhere. And the way it is structured is that for every incident that you capture and upload, a LASMA personnel at that point at that particular place has been geolocated to be able to get that alert and deal with it immediately. So it's not as if we just upload it and come to a central database just like that. Of course, we have in our central database, you get it now. But in any area that you, you upload, whatever is an accident, is an infraction, immediately someone will be able to pick it in that, in that location. That's how it works. And then for more effect, we said, okay, of course, we are doing uh, your patriotic duty as a Lagosian to see something and say something. While at the same time, you can hand points. How do we mean? If, say, for example, someone is driving against traffic, you get the video, you upload it to us, we verify it, that person will be fine. And when they pay fine, you will get a redeemable token. So it is, of course, so that's what, at the same time, what are we doing? We are saying we are working last month also. But I must, sign a, I must send a sign of caution to our people. While you are driving, you do not need to take videos of infractions. That also is because as you are driving and taking videos, somebody else will now take your own video. So the idea is that let us follow all traffic rules. This is something that is that the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babaji De Sonwolu, has put as one of his major number one agenda traffic and transportation and traffic management so this is, will enhance what we are doing in lagos state the promise of mr governor and the people of lagos state is that they will have a seamless traffic movement in lagos aligns with the state broader vision of creating a smart city where technology enhances the quality of urban living and will significantly enhance the overall driving experience in the metropolis and that's the program for this week thank you so much for watching I'm Ayo Tsunde Balogun. Remember, be the best you can, obey all state laws, help keep our environment clean in the state, and live a healthy life. But most importantly, remember to always stay safe. Till next time, it's bye for now.